hello guys welcome to the dms online school if you are new to this channel you are most welcome and on this channel i teach mathematics science biology and also revise past examination papers today's lesson is a chemistry lesson that is looking at the, the topic known as the acid bases and the salts so our subtopic for today is strong and the weak bases and this is lesson number three on this topic and then our introduction as usual will consist of a question and our question for today is to describe the meaning of strong and weak acid all right so strong bases are bases that ionizes or dissociates completely in aqua solutions to produce hydroxide ions all right so those bases that when are in aqua solutions they are able to ionize or dissociate completely in aqua solution to produce hydroxide ions such bases we call them strong bases so uh, if you don't know what it means to ionize or to dissociate you can click on the link here to take you to the first video which i did on it, acids and the bases this means that strong bases exist as ions in aqueous solutions examples of strong bases and their chemical formula are potassium hydroxide then sodium hydroxide, then calcium hydroxide, and then lithium hydroxide. So now let's look at the examples of ionization of strong bases in aqueous solutions. All right, so we'll start with the ionization of potassium hydroxide when it is in aqueous solution. So potassium hydroxide, when it is aqueous solution, ionizes as shown. So potassium hydroxide splits here to form this potassium ion in aqueous and also hydroxide ion in aqueous here. Also, let's look at the another ionization of sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide, when it is in aqueous form, it splits in between here to form sodium ion and the hydroxide ion. Also, let's look at the calcium hydroxide. So calcium hydroxide, when it is in aqua solution, splits in between here to form a calcium ion and the hydroxide ions. All right. So equally, we have lithium hydroxide here. So lithium also dissociates by splitting in between here to form lithium ion and the hydroxide ion. Let's move and see how this ionization occurs. All right. So for instance, if we have this beaker here and another beaker here in this beaker we have sodium hydroxide and in this beaker we have water let's say we add sodium hydroxide in water here so we add sodium hydroxide in water notice what happens the moment sodium hydroxide is added in water it splits into sodium ion and the hydroxide ion everything when you check in this water you cannot see sodium as a compound like this you can only see sodium as the ions sodium ion hydroxide ion sodium ion hydroxide sodium ion hydroxide sodium ion hydroxide and sodium ion like that everything has it completely split into ions or dissociated into ions all right so what we are saying here is that eh, this sodium hydroxide here has actually split into sodium ion and the hydroxide ion. So when you add it in aquas, it splits into sodium ion and the hydroxide ion. Everything, no sodium hydroxide compound stays like that in aquas. Let's continue with the weak bases, right? So weak bases are bases that dissociate partially in aqua solutions to produce hydroxide ions. This means that weak bases do not separate completely to produce hydroxide ions. So these, when they dissociate in aquas, they dissociate partially to form hydroxide ions. And this simply means that not all weak bases or not all the compound of weak base of a weak base will dissociate completely to produce a hydroxide ion so an example of a weak base is the ammonium hydroxide and the uh, ammonium hydroxide written like this splits into ammonium ion plus hydroxide 
ion. So what happens is this ammonium hydroxide, when it is in an aqua solution, it splits in between here to form this ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. Then another way of showing this one is this. So we can say we have, because this comes from ammonia, so we can say ammonia, which is a base, when it is in water, it then dissociates to give us ammonium ion plus hydroxide ion. So what happens? How does ammonia, ammonia when it is in aqueous in water, give us ammonium ion and hydroxide? So one hydrogen atom moves and join the ammonia to form ammonium. Then this water now after losing one hydrogen atom, it forms the hydroxide ion like that. So let's look at how this happens. So let's say we have this beaker containing ammonia and this beaker containing water. Let's say we add this ammonia into the beaker containing water. When we add, this ammonia splits into hydroxide ion and ammonia, hydroxide ion and ammonium. Now, we have hydroxide ion, ammonium ion, hydroxide ion, ammonia. So, this ammonia is still existing. We have uh, ammonium ion, hydroxide ion, ammonium ion, we have ammonia, we have hydroxide ion, hydroxide ion, we still have ammonia, we have uh, hydroxide ion. This is ammonium. So, not everything here has, has dissociated into ions. Part of the ammonium has still remained as ammonia in aqueous solution, rendering this one to be a weak base. All right, so what we are saying here is that this ammonia plus water now gives us ammonium ion plus aqueous hydroxide. All right, so this ammonia plus water gives you ammonium hydroxide plus hydroxide ion. So let's see how such a reaction occurs. So let's say we represent ammonia by its electronic structure, which is one atom of an nitrogen bonded with three atoms of hydrogen. Mind you, I've just indicated the outermost shell that are involved in sharing of electrons. And let's say number of protons, which is plus, must be equal to number of electrons in this compound. That's how it is. So, one atom of hydrogen shares one electron with the atom of nitrogen and here one atom of hydrogen again shares its one atom its one electron with the one electron from nitrogen and also this hydrogen atom shares its one electron with one electron from nitrogen atom so rendering its outermost shells stable and this also stable equally this stable and also then uh, outermost shell for nitrogen also being stable because it contains now eight electrons now this is ammonia plus now it is reacting with water whose electronic structure is this water 
consisting of one oxygen atom bonded with two hydrogen atom where this one hydrogen atom shares its only electron with one electron from oxygen and this hydrogen atom sharing its only electron with the oxygen atom rendering its shell stable as well as the shell of the hydro oxygen to form this ammonium with a plus as a charge so how does it occur we said this one hydrogen electron i mean with this one hydrogen atom is removed and it joins here so the hydrogen atom moves leaving its electron so when it moves leaving its electron it joins this hydrogen this ammonium so it comes and join here and share these electrons which are here and it gets its stability from there then leaving this with that hydrogen uh, electron like this so this uh, this electron here it's this electron here that was left by this hydrogen atom that came to join this ammonia to form ammonium now in this ammonium since this hydrogen is positive because it's a proton it must be positive when it joins this it makes this to have an excess of the positive charge hence that positive indicated here now since it lives as an atom leaving an electron so this one remains with excess electron and since electrons are negative then it acquires the negative charge so this is how such a reaction occurs so we have come to the end of this video i hope this video helped you to understand strong bases and weak bases if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and let me know in the comment section i'll be glad to respond to your comment as i do in my other videos all right if you haven't yet subscribed consider subscribing for more of these lessons all right thank you for now see you in my next lesson as for now bye and please peace